people that you qualify for. But that was not the sweetest program. What is the sweetest program that everybody is interested in? That's the PPP program. Have you heard about that program? You must have heard about that program by now because everybody wanted a piece of this program. And this was a program that was really meant to help small businesses. This was a program that was passed by Congress. COVID-3, I believe it was, the first bill that Congress passed was to, uh, I believe it what was the first bill that Congress passed. I think that was to, um, there was something about the virus. This was to contain the virus, I believe it was. Let me just take a look at my, yes, this was to, uh, to look for a, a, a of vaccines for the virus, right? That was the first thing. The first, the second bill that was passed was um, about the health issues um, for related to COVID-19. And then the third bill that was passed was this stimulus package to help um, businesses and to also put uh, uh, cash in the hands of individuals, okay? So now what's going on? So with the PPP program, the money ran out almost immediately. So let me tell you a little bit about the PPP program. Okay, you can just give me one second right here. Let me get that for you. So what is the PPP program? The PPP program was a program that really says that um, it's run by the SBA, right? Uh, this was almost a $350 billion, $349 billion program. You could apply for a loan up to $10 million, up to $10 million. Um, and the, the application, pro, you had to be in business, you have to be, have a business, you have to have employees, or you have to be a sole proprietor, but it's mainly for businesses, individuals, that's a different, that's a, that was a different program. That was a stimulus check in which every individual received $1,200 and then they received $500 for each dependent that, um, um, that they had. And then for every, oh, I didn't mention this previously, for every $100 that you are above the, um, your threshold, if you're single, that's $75,000. If you're married, double that. Um, for every $100 that you're above the threshold, your rebate check was reduced by $5, okay? So the PPP program was um, really targeted at small businesses with employees, um, up to 500 employees. So this program was to... Um, uh, the proceeds of the program could be used for specific things. This program was to uh, re retain employees. That's why it's called the Paycheck Paycheck Protection Program. So basically, it was ca it's calculated um, by looking at your average monthly payroll and then your um, additional benefits like health insurance and retirement benefits. Those costs are added onto that. This is just top level. Those costs are added onto your um, calculation to see how much you uh, you qualify for. Now, the program can become 100% um, uh, forgivable grant if you use it for the appropriate things. That, and that's again is uh, payroll, utilities, mortgage, interest, rent. Uh, so really, really specific. But the main criteria was that you had to retain your employees. Um, so now it gets interesting, right? So the program you could you could hire up to or you could qualify for up to ten million dollars for this program. And again, this program was limited; it was restricted to small businesses. Well, I have to tell you, what's going on is that some big businesses have hijacked the program. Yes, I said some big businesses have hijacked the program and they have taken money from small businesses that are trying to keep that want to keep their businesses open how can you first of all i think that congress was like totally wrong on this first of all how do you equate a business that has 500 employees at the same and put them on the same level with a business with 
30 employees, 20, 10, 5, or a single um, self-employed business. How can you put those businesses in the same bucket? That's what Congress did. That is what they did. How can anybody do that? How is a small business supposed to go and fight with the banks to get in the game? I think, you know, once the floodgates is open, they're already, they already left behind. Okay, so this program, the application opened up to the public, to businesses on April 3rd was when it was opened up to all small businesses or rather the main small businesses, corporations, partnerships, S-Corp, LLCs. It did not include self-employed or um, independent contractors. Well, would you know that some big businesses under the guise of being a small business because they qualify under another loophole, an exception that Congress put. Because everybody is rightly concerned about restaurants and the food industry, restaurants, uh, you know, about them going out of business. So th there was a, uh, a caveat in the bill that made an exception that did not put a, a limit to the number of employees that the uh, food and beverage industry um, that, that um, they could apply for the program. Well, unfortunately, you know, some people have taken really, really horrible advantage of this program. And this isn't in use right now, so it's, I'm not telling you anything that's, that's a secret. The main corporate right now, and I know there are lots of them, there are, lots more, there are a lot more of them out there. All for right now, only one person has reported, has released um, this, this data. Ruth Chris Steakhouse. Have you been to that restaurant? Well, I used to have been there a long, long time ago, but I'm not going to be going back. Chris Ruth Steakhouse. Do you know how many employees they have? Over 5,000, or about 5,000. Do they qualify as a small business? Well, apparently they were able to qualify for the program because they are a food and beverage business. So this program, this company, Roots Chris Steakhouse, it's, it's so crazy, isn't it? Roots Chris Steakhouse. They got $20, $20 million. $20 million is stimulus money. Think about that for a minute. So, yes, the program um, said you could get a maximum of $10 million from the program. So how did they get $20 million? Well, two of their companies applied. You know, they, they have restaurants all over the place. So um, two of their chain restaurants applied and they got $10 million each, $10 million each. Ah, this is so bad. Do you know $10 million each for two restaurants? It's actually a, it's the same restaurant, Ruth Chris Steakhouse. Do you know how many small, real small businesses could have taken advantage of that $10 million? How many barber shops? How many nail salons? How many mom and pop grocery stores? How many pizza shops? Pizza shops, right? Or Chinese restaurants, takeout joints. Those are, yes, those are food and beverage industries that do not hire 5,000 people. Or your, you know, your tattoo shop down the road, your office um, printing shop down the road, your hardware store, your local hardware store, your automobile store, those guys, who are the bread and butter of our economy. They have all been shut out of this program. Do you know that only 5% of real, real small businesses got, a, got some of that grant, got some of the PPP money? 
Let me go back to that 10 million for a minute. So one company got $20 million. Let's just stick to that 10 million for a minute. If a company, a single entity, a single business gets 10 million, Let's say this small business is not small. Most small businesses do not qualify for that kind of money, okay? None of my clients qualify for a million dollars. Let's not even go there. Let's just say for a minute that the small business qualifies. After doing their calculation, they are taking to, into calculation in, um, their payroll, their benefits, health insurance, and all of that. They qualify for 100,000 of grants of loan from the PPP program. Do you know how many small businesses could have used that $10 million? 100. That's 100 small businesses, okay? Okay, so let's say, well, $100,000. Maybe you're saying, well, my business doesn't qualify for $100,000, I only, uh, employ maybe 20 people, I, you know, when I do that calculation, I don't come up with 100, maybe, okay, let's say you come up with $50,000. Your business qualifies for a 50,000 loan, which you would hope you want to become a $50,000 grant. How much could that $10 million have covered for businesses in the same um, scenario? Under that, um, 50,000 eligibility amount, well, 200. Think of it. One company got what could have helped 200 small businesses. That's 200 small businesses. Okay, so you're saying $50,000. Well, my business doesn't qualify for 50,000 of loan. Well, you know, I may, Maybe you're a gig worker, right? You're a sole proprietor. You are a, an independent contractor. You could qualify for $20,000. So if you make $100,000 in sales or uh, you have 1099s worth $100,000, that's the maximum you can collect for, for, that you can base your calculation for each person. You know, you do the math. You don't have to do the math. You do the math and it is... You know, the average is about 8000 a month. Your average payroll will come down to about $8,000 a month. So uh, it, uh, the, the calculation is based on two times five of your average monthly payroll. So let's say just, just say to round it down or round it to a nice number, you qualify for $20,000. How many similar businesses like you would have benefit, benefited from that $1 million, um, $10 million? $500. Five hundred small businesses, five hundred gig workers, five hundred independent consultants, five hundred self-employed people. Okay, the 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 phys, uh, a personal trainer, the physical therapist. Uh, you know, the, the lawnmower, the landscaper, you know, all of these businesses that could have used these resources, they got shut out of the program. So many businesses did not even get a chance to put in their applications. Why? Why did this happen? Why did Congress do this? And why did the SBA interpret it this way? And why did the banks cater to only their big, big clients. First of all, they came up with all these ridiculous rules. You have to have a, they have to have a business relationship with you. If you don't bank with them, if you don't have a business bank, first of all, even if you bank with them, but you had only a personal account, you wouldn't be able to apply for the role because for the program, because they said you needed to have a business account. Now, for you small businesses, for guys that are gig workers, you know, this is um, a point in time that says, you know, if you're running a business, you really need to get your act together. And this is where you need to reach out to your accountants, your CPA, reach out to me, reach out to somebody to help you get your business structure together. Um, because the reason why some of these small businesses are having this issue is because 
they, they didn't have a good structure in place. But apart from that, this program is still very, very flawed. Okay. So uh, let me just go back to this one second. One million dollars. That's one million dollars. No, it's actually not one million dollars. It's ten. They got ten million dollars. They got twenty million dollars. But how could Congress have written such a bill? You're giving ten million dollars to one entity, and then let's say it's a small business, is it's a gig worker that doesn't make a lot of money. Maybe they've been running uh, and so they made only, they only qualify for $10,000 of grant of the stimulus money. $10 million versus $10,000 of stimulus money. How many geek workers will this um, program help? That's $1,000, $1,000, a thousand geek workers. A thousand gig workers that this program could have helped by giving that oh, $10 million. This is so bad. I mean, how could Congress not have seen this coming? How could you guys not have seen this coming? Really? How could you not have seen this coming? You did not put everyone in an equal playing field. You, did, you, you were putting the small guys in the, you know, in the boat with the big shacks who got first dibs with the banks. The banks have all these big clients that they give professional treatment to. And for, because of uh, some definition, they call them, they re refer to them as a small business. In my books, a business that employs 400, 400 employees, that business is not a small business. Please don't give it some theoretical definition and call it a small business. It's not a small business. Okay? So Congress did, did everybody, did the small business folks a disservice by putting them in the same program. They did not have a, a fighting chance at all. There was no way they could have gotten access to that building. Yes, some small businesses have gotten funded. Funded. Who are the small businesses that have gotten funded? Those are the small businesses that that bank with regional banks. That 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 you know. Those are the small businesses who have applied through regional banks through um, uh, credit loan facilities not the small businesses that apply with the big banks. All the big banks, yeah, they were, they were actually, could you believe this? The big banks, they were actually calling, soliciting their bigger clients to come and apply for this program, even though the bigger clients did not need the money because their businesses are doing okay. Yes, they might suffer some economic of financial challenges, but not on the level of, you know, the small businesses. The mom and pop business will close faster than those big guys. You no, know, the mom and pop guys, are, those are the guys that are gonna declare bankruptcy. Those are the guys that cannot, you know, keep their doors open, keep their businesses open, keep their, you know, empl uh, staff employed, put food on their table, pay their rent, you know, look at this. So I got a, I, I sent out, you know, I called, you know, I did what my Congress people told me to do, you know, call your mortgage company, ask them, you know, to, you know, if you can stop paying your mortgage or, or do a, a forbearance, um, or, uh, you know, find out what kind of programs that they have for you. So I got this response back from my mortgage company. They said that um, they could. They gave me uh, how many options? They gave me four op options. Uh, one was uh, this is something that you can do if you don't can pay your rent or pay your mortgage. They could give you a, a offer you a reinstatement plan, so you pay all past due amounts in a single lump sum payment. If you cannot pay one month mortgage or one month rent, tell me. 
how are you going to be able to pay three months or four months all at once when you have not been working? Your clients have not been coming in the door. You've not been selling any books. You've not been performing whatever services you perform. How are you going to pay three months of rent or mortgage in one month? That's the reinstatement plan. The repayment plan, the repayment plans you pay all past due and months together with your regular payments over an extended period of time. You know, so this allows you to bring your mortgage current without having to pay a that's huge um, lump, lump sum payment. So, you know, that's, that's a much friendlier plan. And then they have the forbearance plan, which allows you to make reduced payments or, you know, you don't have to pay any payment at all for a specific period of, of time, you know, up to maybe six months or three months. They were offering me three months. Um, and then, you know, they're like, oh, you know, uh, is it gonna be reported to the credit agencies? Is it gonna damage your, your credit? That's something you wanna know? No, it, it doesn't do that. It's not gonna damage your credit. Um, so, the other thing I was saying is, um, so if you can do that, you can, um, it allows you the time to improve your finance situation and possibly qualify for another option such, such as a modification. That's where you complete your forbearance plan. And the modification really, it just modifies the payment based on new terms. So um, it requires successful, you know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So anyway, those plans are crazy. They tell me I have to pay three months of mortgage or rent in one month. I'm like, and I tell you that we're all going through problems and this is the solution that you offer. Nah, that's not good. Anyway, so where was I with this program, with the PPP program? Small businesses. Okay. We need to get our acts together. Okay. If you have a small business and you did not get in to this program, well, first of all, it's not our fault because they really messed up. But you need to be prepared. We all need to be prepared because this program is going to be funded again. And hopefully they're talking about doing it right this time, doing it right in that they're going to put smaller small businesses or sole proprietors and self-employed people and independent contractors, they're going to put those businesses in a different buckets so they're not swimming with those big, horrible sharks. Yeah, I said it. So right now, Congress are looking to pass another bill that's going to add 250 billion to the program, to the PPP program. And then um, supposedly they're going to caveat, I'm, I'm yet to get the details of this, but supposedly there's going to be a caveat. Either it's going to be out of the 250 or it's going to be an additional 125 billion that's going to be targeted specifically, specifically for small businesses like the real small businesses. And I really wish they would stop calling this, this all the, those other folks, the folks with 500 and 400 employees. I wish they would stop calling, referring to them as small businesses because they really are not small businesses. So what do you have to do now? You need to make sure that you have your books in order so that if you get another chance to apply for this program, you can take advantage of the program immediately, okay? There are some folks that are saying, who are saying that if your application is not already with a bank or with a lender, you are not even going to get a look, a peek at the replenishment funds. So, if your application is already in with a lender or with a bank, there is a higher possibility that when the funds come through, 
you will get your PPP funds or your EIDL funds if you've already applied. However, if you have not applied, it's going to be a challenge, but I really want you to be prepared. If you are still waiting to put in your application, make sure you have everything that you need to get. And they're really making it really, really difficult, like I say, for those independent contractors and those freelancers. You know, we know that most businesses, most of the time, small businesses, they want to try and reduce their tax liability as much as possible. So most of the time, they're not showing any profit or they're showing very little profit. Unfortunately, this is a time when that's not a good practice because that is actually, it's going to be detrimental because the calculation of your loan proceeds of the grant amount is based on your net income if you are self-employed. Okay, so you want to have your books done, your books in order. You want to have your bank statements available. Get it, get down, download your PDF copies. You know, if you have not yet done your tax returns, some banks are asking for tax returns. And that's another thing. All the banks, they're all asking for different things. Okay, if your bank has... Um, if they want a tax return, you need to make sure it's available so that you can get it in immediately and not miss out on the second round of stimulus funding because it's going to go really fast. The first funding, I told you, the first funding that opened up for the PPP program, that program opened up to accept applications on April 6th, uh, April, April 3rd. Guess when Ruth's Chris Tech House got their funding? <laughs> so crazy. On the 6th, on the 6th, three days later, the biggest firm business, a big business with 5,000 5, um, employees got this funding. But while there's small churches, small non-for-profit organizations, just different businesses that need this funding and they've not been able to get close to it at all. Why did this happen? Gosh, we've got to take care of each other, folks. We have got to do this for each other. Okay? So, what can you do? Like I said, I want you to be proactive. If your books are not yet in order, get them in order. Reach out to your accountants, reach out to a local CPA, reach out to me, reach out to somebody and get your books in order. Get your documents in order. Prepare, go through the SBA, go to sba.gov. The SBA has a sample application on their website. You can go on my website as well, ohacpa.com. Get a sample of that of the application and fill it out so that when you get access to a lender, a bank, you can apply immediately and you know what to apply so you don't spend time going back and forth. You can get the application in immediately. Okay. What else, what else, what else can you do? You can be proactive. I'm not usually into politics, but you need to call your Congress folks and tell them to pass that bill. Pass that bill, Congress folks. Come on, guys. What are you doing? You're trying to get cash in the hands of Main Street America and you're giving it to the big guys? How does that help the little guy on Main Street? Main Street America does not equal a business with 5,000 employees. That does not equal a business with even 500 employees. Not in my definition. So, get ready. Be proactive. Reach out to your Congress people. Let them know they need to 
add some more money into this um, stimulus package. I don't even want to go into the stimulus bills that they've passed for the other, for the big corporations, the other industries that have to survive because if, do not, if they do not survive, we're all going to crash, right? Okay. Well, we're all in this together. I don't have to lose just because you want to survive. You shouldn't have to lose because I want to survive. We all need to survive. We all need to get the economy back on track. But we should get all get a fair shake at it. You know, don't stack the deck. Don't stack the deck against the small guys. Don't do that. Okay. So I could go on and on. I might get woke up. <laughs> All right, so that's going to be it for now. Um, 